Turning the volume control screw inward closes the passage and reduces the amount of idle fuel air mixture. And turning the volume control screw out opens the passage and allows a greater volume of idle fuel air mixture to travel to the engine. So we are concerned with only two carburetor adjustments for correct engine idle, engine RPM and idle fuel air mixture. Of course, there are many other factors which influence engine operation. Condition of the ignition system, ignition timing, compression, and engine temperature. A tachometer must first be attached to the engine before correct adjustment can be made. Turn the idle adjusting screw in or out until the idle RPM is correct according to the tachometer. Then adjust the volume control screw, turning it in slowly until the engine speed starts to drop. Then turn it out between a quarter and a half turn until the engine runs smoothly. Now repeat the idle speed adjustment, watching the tachometer, and if necessary, readjust the volume control screw. We've been talking generally about the 28 PICT and the 30 PICT carburetors. Although they are different models, they do have the same adjusting sequence. First, the idle RPM, then the volume control screw, and finally, check the idle RPM again. But on cars equipped with emission control devices, some changes were made that require different adjustment techniques. The 30 PICT-2 carburetor, which was installed on 1968 types 1 and 2 vehicles, is the first of the emission control carburetor. The idle speed is controlled by an adjusting screw which opens or closes the throttle as before. But notice the changes in the idle circuit. Air entering the idle circuit passes through a calibrated hole to the pilot jet where it mixes with fuel. The fuel-air mixture reaches the volume control screw as before, but a portion of the mixture is controlled by a factory preset screw. So adjusting the volume control screw makes only a small difference in engine RPM. To adjust a 30 PICT-2 carburetor correctly, be sure that all other engine adjustments are correct and that the engine is warm. With a tachometer attached, adjust the idle to the correct RPM with the idle adjusting screw. The volume control screw is slightly different and because of the refined system makes only slight changes in engine speed. So watch the tachometer and turn the volume control screw in carefully until the speed drops slightly then unscrew it until the fastest RPM is reached. The idle speed may have to be readjusted. With the 30 PICT-2, as with other carburetors, be careful of the volume control screw. It is delicate and easily damaged if forced against its seat. The 30 PICT-3 carburetor, which was introduced on the 1970 models, has some significant changes. Remember how we controlled idle speed by opening the throttle valve in the other carburetors? Well, in the 30 PICT-3, the throttle is always closed during idle. Idle air now bypasses the throttle valve and is controlled by the air bypass screw. Unscrewing it opens this passage, allowing more air to the engine. The fuel circuit has also been modified and is now connected to a volume control drilling and an air bypass where it mixes with the incoming air. Since the volume control screw is preset at the factory, the air bypass screw controls idle speed and the air fuel mixture is monitored automatically. Idle speed adjustment on the 30 PICT-3 is very simple. With the engine at normal operating temperature and the tachometer attached, Adjust the idle speed by turning the air bypass screw. Turning it in reduces the speed. Turning it out increases the idle speed. 
and the fuel mixture is automatically regulated. This is the only adjustment you make on the 30 PICT-3. That brings us up to the 34 PICT-3, the carburetor found on 1971 models. Its functions are the same as those of the 1970 carburetor. The important difference, aside from its larger size, is the relocated air bypass screw and the fuel cutoff valve. When the ignition is switched on, the fuel cutoff valve is held open and the idle fuel air mixture can reach the engine. When the ignition is switched off, the valve closes and no fuel can reach the engine. During idle, fuel from the main jet is drawn through the pilot jet to numbers one and two where it mixes with air from calibrated drillings. In drilling number one, the fuel air mixture flows past the factory preset volume control screw and onto the engine. In drilling number two, the rest of the fuel air mixture, which is controlled by the air bypass screw, passes through the open fuel cutoff valve and onto the engine. Unscrewing the air bypass screw opens the passage and allows more air and also more fuel to reach the engine, which of course raises the RPM. The preset volume control screw on the 34 PICT-3, covered with a plastic plug, should not be touched during a normal idle adjustment. To adjust the idle speed, simply connect a tachometer to the engine, first making sure the ignition timing is right and that the engine is at operating temperature. Then turn the large air bypass screw until the engine is at the correct RPM. This automatically changes the fuel air mixture to compensate for the changed RPM. All Volkswagen carburetors, from the 28 PICTs to the latest 34 PICT-3, work on the same principles. Correct idle adjustment on all of them depends on a precise balance of fuel and air at the proper RPM. Careful adjustment of the volume control screw and idle speed screw are essential on the older carburetors. And on the newer 30 and 34 PICT-3, the air bypass screw adjustment is vital to controlling the amount of unburned fuel that goes into the exhaust at idle speeds. The important thing is what you know about every Volkswagen that rolls in for checkup or repair. And you have to know the system. The Volkswagen carburetor system. Because the idle speed adjustment you make is the key to the efficiency of the system you control. Mm -hmm.